What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's tutorial I'm going to be creating a truss in Revit and I'm going to be showing you everything you need to know about creating trusses in Revit. So the first tutorial ever on my channel is on how to model a truss in Revit. It's a really old tutorial, I made it using this fake Russian accent, it's terrible. Uh, you can check it out, I'm going to be leaving a link in the description of this video. Uh, but anyways, it was the first tutorial and it was quite popular and I, I thought I might improve that tutorial because I, I feel like I didn't show you all of the functionality uh, of the truss family and all of the options when it comes to trusses in Revit. So I decided to make a new and improved tutorial on that topic. Now before I get into that, I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial. It helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. And also make sure to subscribe because I make useful Revit tutorials each week. I make multiple tutorials and also I make one advanced Balkan architect course. All of these courses are over one hour long. I've got over 50 hours of content and you can find all of them uh, using the first link in the description of this video. It takes you to my Patreon and there you can find all of my advanced courses as well as all of my families, like this trust family that I'm going to be uh, using in this project and of course all of my project files. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get into the tutorial. So here we are in Revit and I'm immediately going to go here to models and then to new and I'm just going to start a new project using the architectural template. Now you can go with a structural template because it's already going to have some elements but I think it's a better option to start this one off with the architectural template just because it's going to, uh, well, we're going to have to load in all of the elements so you can know where to find them. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to be uh, doing is uh, just go here to the structure tab and then first let's add some columns on which we're going to be placing our truss. So I'm just going to go here to the column tool. We already have one loaded in and it's good enough for this tutorial so I'm just going to leave that one here. And then here for depth, it's set to depth, but I don't want to go below this level, I want to go above it. So we need to change this from depth to height. And then here, uh, instead of unconnected, let's attach it to a level two. Okay, so once we have those two options set up here, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit, flip this around perhaps, place one here, and then one over here. And now here we have these two columns. Uh, now let's see the distance between these two columns is around 10,000 uh, millimeters. So maybe we can extend it a little bit more. Let's see now. Okay, this is almost good enough. I'm just going to go here uh, up to the quick access toolbar. I go with the dimension tool, the align dimension, and then we can measure from here to here. And then if I just select this, now let's go with 1200. There we go. Okay, so we've got these two columns and if I just switch to 3D, this is what that looks like. Now we can switch to level two, so you can just double click here on this button or alternatively you can find the same option here in the project browser, just go to level two. And if we zoom in, you can see that these are really difficult to see. So I'm just going to change the detail level to fine. So we have a bit more lines and now we can start placing our truss. So for the truss, you need to go here to structure, uh, the structure tab, the structure panel, and then click on truss. Now, because this is the architectural uh, template, we don't really have any trusses loaded in. So I'm just going to load in one now. I'm just going to click here, yes. Uh, and here in the metric library, of course, feel free to use the imperial library if you prefer the imperial system. But I'm just going to scroll down a little bit, find the structural trusses, double click to open that up. And here we have many options. Now, if I just click one of these here, you're going to get preview and then you can use the arrow keys to scroll down. Now I want to use this uh, Pratt Gable truss with six panels. So we have this option and this option. I'm just going to go with this one and then hit open. Okay, so once the truss is loaded in, you have to place it. So for that, make sure that the placement plane is at level on which you're on, in this case level two. And then we're just going to start off from this column and I'm going to try to start off from the edge of it like this and then all the way to the other side to this one. Hit escape key a couple of times and that's it. Now if I go here in the 3D view you're going to notice that it looks well it looks kind of terrible. 
Now the reason for this is Revit used only the beams that it had. Now if I go back into level 2 and go here to the beam tool, you're going to notice that we only have one beam loaded in. It's this uh, universal beam uh, 305 by 165 by 40. Now if I hit the escape key a couple of times, go back in the 3D view, hover over one of these beams in the truss, hit the tab key once so only one beam highlights and if I select it you're going to notice that that's the beam that's being used. So it's just going to use the beams that it has here in Revit and in this case it, this one is the only one. Now we don't want this, it looks uh, kind of awful. Uh, well these, the bottom one and the top one are kinda okay, but these in between are terrifying. So what I'm going to do is just go here to insert, go to load family, and then here let's uh, go back uh, one level here in the US metric library and now find structural framing. Now structural framing basically means beams. Uh, go to steel and then here we have all of the steel beams. So let's see, do we have that universal beam? Here we go, we can find it, and if I just hit open, you're going to notice that now we have many, many more options to choose from. Now, I want a smaller one for these in-between ones, so I'm going to load in basically this one, the 200, 203, and then also the, uh, let's go, or actually, let's go with maybe, yeah, let's go with 150, and then one of these, the uh, 203, so I want to Two types loaded in. You just hold the control key if you want to add multiple ones. Click OK and that's it. Now in order to place these uh, basically these uh, these new beams into our truss we have to select the truss, go into edit type and then here we have some more options. So the first option is the top cord and then we have the bottom cord and in between we have vertical webs and di diagonal webs. So what does this mean? Well top cord are these two, so these two on top that, that form the cabled roof. Then we have the one that's on the bottom, so that's the bottom cord. And then for webs you have these vertical webs and you have these diagonal ones. So that's what this whole thing is referring to. So what we need to do now is just scroll all the way up. So the top cord uh, we can keep it as is. Then the vertical webs I'm going to set framing type and I'm just going to change it to this one, the 203. And here you can leave it as, as is, or you can even set it up to the original beam that we had loaded in. For the diagonal webs, I'm going to change the framing type from nothing to this one, the smallest one. And then for the bottom cord, I'm going to, oops, for the bottom cord, I'm going to stick with the, uh, stick with the existing one. And if I just hit apply now, you're going to notice that these are now a bit smaller and these are a lot smaller. Okay, so once we have that done, it still looks terrible because everything is overlapping here and here, uh, well, nothing's reaching anything and it doesn't look the way it should. So how do you fix that? Well, what we need to do is we need to do a whole lot of coping. So to cope all of these, we have to extend them and play around with them. Now, the problem is if I just use the tab key again to try to select the individual uh, individual. Uh, beam, so you hover over the whole truss, hit the tab key once, then it's going to highlight the individual beam, and once you select it, uh, you can't really edit it, you need to unpin it. But the problem is we would have to select and unpin all of these, which would take a long time. So what you need to do is just make a simple cross selection, and then uh, you can go here to filter, go to check none, and then you can just check the structural framing and not the truss, hit apply. Okay, and now you can unpin them all by using this UP option. So just by clicking here, you can unpin all of them. But before I do that, I just want to show you one more thing before we kind of unpin all of this and make them uh, individual elements. And that's the option that you can actually resize this uh, truss. So if I scroll down over here, here we have the truss height. It's currently set to 1800, but I can send it change it to 2200, hit apply, and now as you can see it's a bit taller. So those are the additional options that we have. Okay, let's go back, make a selection, uh, filter, uh, uncheck this, hit apply, okay, and now if I just go here to unpin, there we go, so they are all unpinned. So now if I hover over this, hit the tab key once, and if I select it, now I can extend it just like this. Now I tend to extend it just so it uh, goes kind of inside of the beam, 
Same thing for this one here. So I'm just using the tab key to make that selection. And this bottom one, I can actually keep it where it was. Well, this was maybe an overkill, so just go like that. Same thing here, you can extend it a little bit. Same thing for this one, go up to here and up to here. For this one, we just need to go up a little bit. So you basically want to do this for all of these. Now, in this case, I chose this simpler one because it has, well, less work to be done. But of course, the more complex you have in your beam or the more complex your beam is, there's going to be a lot more work. Okay, so once we have done all of this, the next step that we need to do is we need to do coping. So for that, go here to modify. And then here on the geometry panel, we have the cope tool. So for the cope tool, you just select it, then you select the beam that you're going to cope, the beam that you're going to be coping it with. And there we go. Now it's cut. So again, do the same thing here. Same thing here. And just go like that. You can do the same thing even here. So I can select this one on top, then this one, and there we go. Same thing on the other side, the top one first, then the bottom. And you can just keep doing that until you pretty much fix up all of these. So I've got a few more. There we go. Okay, that looks good enough. So there we go, this looks better. I think I've missed this one. Let's just go like that. Okay, here we have some overlap here as well. So you can select this one and cope it with the vertical one. And the same thing here, this one, there we go. Okay, so this truss now actually looks really good. And you can maybe set this to realistic. So now it has that steel color. And there we go. So now we have a truss that actually looks good. So that's all of the functionality that you have for trusses in Revit. And uh, in, a, in a few weeks or in a few videos, I'm going to be, be creating a video for a more complex trusses and how to actually create these truss families actually, exactly how you want them to look. So you don't have to rely on the existing ones. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. If you want to get all of my Revit project files, over 500 files so far, check out my Patreon, first link in the description. There you can also find all of my advanced courses. I've got like over uh, 50 hours of content so far. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.